This video will detail my personal thoughts on Cyberpunk 2077 for the PS4 version specifically. Now, I'm, as I'm sure anyone watching this video knows, this game was very hyped up and, upon release, was considered a disappointment due to its period glitches and underwhelming console graphics. I received this game as a gift and got it on release, and I was, and I was somewhat interested in buying it. I, uh, already, mainly for its setting. I, I kind of got the feeling that this game wasn't going to be everything it was hyped up to be, but I figured, hey, developers made a game that people loved before, surely I'll find something to like about it. Then the reviews came out. I still thought, oh, okay, the only complaints are about the bugs. Uh, this game will be decent enough. I should go on with an open mind still. But uh, I'm going to be completely honest here. The bugs and bad graphics are definitely there, but even if this game was well polished, I highly doubt that I would still like this game. There isn't much that this game has to offer that I really like. So let's start with the most important aspect. No, it's not the character design. Let's look at the gameplay. It's trying to go over that whole open world story driven RPG thing that I guess is pretty popular these days, I think. But there's some problems here. One, uh, while there are stats and you level up, uh, it honestly feels like it barely matters at all. Like, I, I feel like my combat experience would have been about the same if there weren't any stats to increase. I, I mean, besides HP, I guess. Another thing, I, I can't really say how good the open world aspect is because I never felt compelled to explore the map on my own terms, but I have heard that you can't even explore all of the map. Which, if that's true, that's pretty sad. But, uh, the biggest problem is uh, the story-driven experience part uh, that, 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 that fails because the story is not very good. So, the story in this game is really boring most of the time. Th there's a few mildly interesting parts, and I sort of like the last part of the game, and by the last part, I mean literally like the last 10-15 minutes before the credits. But everything else is really boring and isn't engaging whatsoever. So I'm going to describe basically the whole story, so if for some reason you care to experience the story of Cyberpunk for yourself, you may as well just exit out of this video. Uh, this is all off the top of my head because quite frankly I do not care enough about the story to research it again just for fact checking purposes, so if I get any details wrong, um, uh, that, that, that's just kind of how, how it is, so uh, sorry about that. Um, but anyway, at the beginning of the game, you have to select a life path, basically like a backstory for your character. But a uh, backstory, I just mean that you just see your character, whose name is V, doing some random thing related to the life path for five minutes. Uh, v is a bland character. I honestly just see him or her as a self-insert type of character. Uh, I, I, I chose Corpo because that's not really a position you see your main character in often in most games compared to the other two life paths. Uh... But about like five minutes in, you get fired because, I don't know, like future dystopia or whatever. Uh, this is the theme of the game, which I, I mean, it's fine enough, but it causes some annoyances later on because, because of just how hard they hammered it in early on. So you have to go on a couple missions with a guy named Jackie, who is one of the only two good characters in the game. One involves invading some corporation named Arasaka. Uh, you see some higher up kill his father, and then the guy who sent you on the mission, Dexter, tries to kill you because for some unexplained reason the authorities could somehow link V being in the building to Dexter specifically? I, I don't really know. I don't get a lot of what this game, game story is trying to say. So because you put some chip in your brain while uh, you were there, uh, you managed to escape death after... Dex shoots you, and now you see a hologram of a guy named Johnny Silverhand, or as I would be referring to him in this review a lot, uh, Keanu Reeves, because everyone got all hyped over this one little fact, like I personally don't know much about Keanu Reeves and haven't seen any movies he's in, so that's all I can really associate Johnny with. Johnny is just your typical annoying edgelord who brags about how cool he is and how much you suck and are a failure in life. As explained by a ripper doc named Victor, the chip makes it so that you like die in two weeks for some reason, and now you gotta find a way to get out, so get out of it, and save your life. Uh, you do a bunch of missions. I forget what purpose they serve to the overall story, despite being mandatory. I suppose it don't really matter. At one point, uh, you get hooked up with these people called the Voodoo Boys because there's a person named Bridget. 
you need to talk to. Like, like that, they, they're portrayed as, like, some kind of, like, spooky religious cult or something, but they're just a regular gang when you really think about it. Uh, here's something the game, the game sucks at. Uh, ma making your choices actually matter in the long run. Some guy named Placide, uh, I think that's how you pronounce his name, tells me not to make a deal with some person in the mall cinema, like, once I meet him. Uh, the guy in question seems alright, so I ignore Placide and strike a deal. Uh, Keanu Reeves also decides to call me a moron for falling with the guy's offer. But, but nothing really bad happens as a result. Like, all that happens that affects the story in any way whatsoever is that Placide gets upset with me, and I guess we almost break out into, like, a fist fight. Uh, but then Brigitte shows up, so everything's just fine. Uh, she puts you to an ice tub to go into the black wall or whatever it's called, and, th and then you go through a flashback sequence with Keanu Reeves, which is by far the worst section in the entire theme for a reason that I will discuss later. Uh, after that, Brigitte and the Voodoo Boys gang decide that they want to kill you from for some inexplicable reason. Like, there's no reason for me to assume that, like, this only happened because I betrayed Placide earlier. Uh, seeing as I haven't talked about gameplay in a while, here's some more problems with the gameplay. Uh, so they give you the option to not kill people, but this affects precisely nothing whatsoever, at least to my knowledge. Uh, apparently you're able to spare bosses, but even after getting an enemy to survive at literally 0% HP, it was impossible for me to spare anyone. If it's possible, I just could not figure out how to do it. Also, it's pretty difficult to go through areas stealthily, so when it comes to regular enemies, the best way to get through an area is just, just, you may as well just shoot everyone up, like, there's no point even attempting to go for, like, in simply incapacitating them, because like I said, this basically affects nothing in the game. Um, although actually that part where, uh, I said that the best way to get through an area is to shoot everyone is actually a lie. Because you see, in an area where you beat up some guy called the Woodbutt, you can find a katana. With the exception of like long range enemies that you can't reasonably hit, all you need to do in these combat encounters is just spam the attack button with your k katana in hand, and all normal enemies will die in like th 3 to 6 hits. Bosses aren't very fun either, you just shoot slice them approximately 50 more times. There's like one kind of unique boss where I have to like shoot its weak point so it stops regenerating health, but that's it. Uh, it's also worth using over guns since you don't have to worry about ammo running out. Like, like the sword doesn't break or anything. Uh, another complaint I have regarding combat is that there's all this loot that you can collect from enemies, but you will move slow as molasses if you're carrying too much stuff. I always found it annoying when they just sacrifice the enjoyment of the game for realism, and this is no exception. Uh, to go on a tangent, hilariously, for a game that's clearly striving for realism and immersion, there are a lot of cases where they just embarrass themselves in this regard. The AI, for instance, is pretty pathetic, because you don't have access to a personal car for about half the game. Uh, you can either buy a car, which I did not, walk 3.2 kilometers to get your dex destination, which I did a couple times, or you can just break into someone else's car and steal it. Uh, when I stole someone's car, which I eventually did start doing, uh, nothing happened, uh, no police went after me, and the person didn't react whatsoever. Uh, wh what's funny about this is I recall reading somewhere, like, I forget if it was in-game or online or something, that, like, just the police, like, will not go easy on you for committing crimes like this. Also, the driver AI does nothing like, of interest, like, as in, like, they, they don't do anything to really, like, make it, like, realistic and immersive or whatever. Uh, basically, at one point, I stopped in front of a car, because I, and it, it just sat there. Uh, then it vanished into thin air, like, I just look away, and then I, for a split second, then I come, turn around, and it's just gone. Then another car drives right up to where the previous one is, like, you know, where my car was sitting, and it just sat there forever instead of, like, trying to go around or something. Okay, so back to the story. After I escaped the Voodoo Boys gang, uh, Keanu Reeves has sort of heart-to-heart -heart with you and talks about why he is the way he is. 
He reveals that it's the corporations which made Night City a futuristic dystopia, and he is really upset about this. Uh, this scene fails to get out of anything out of me, because from the very beginning, this game hammers it in so hard that you're living in a dystopian city, and the people at the top of the corporations are, like, the bad guys. Th th therefore, this does basically nothing but tell me what I already know about the world. Like, it's even supposed to be, like, delivered, like, all heartfelt or dramatic or something, but it, it just doesn't work at all for me. I think it's after this I deal with some guy named Takamura who I think wants me to get someone named Hellman? I honestly don't remember, I'm just assuming so, because after talking to some random lady... I have to go talk with someone named Rogue, which spawns a series of events that leads to the successful capturing of Hellman. So it is after leaving it is after leaving Rogue that we meet the only other good character in the entire game, Panem. Uh, she's not an amazing character or anything, but she has a decent personality. is an obnoxious brat, unlike 98% of everyone else in this game. After slicing up some gang factions, we have to go to some cliffs outside of the city to shoot down a hovercraft containing Hellman. Uh, this is pretty much the only section of the game that I actually felt was like a little exciting and engaging. Uh, so you have to set up an EMP and then shoot down the hovercraft that he's in. But this fa ends up failing because the signal and your turret are jammed or something. Like, for some reason it just don't work. But then Panem gets out of the vehicle you're using to, like, do all this stuff. And then she takes out a rocket launcher and successfully shoots it down from, like, a very long distance away. Like, that, that was actually a somewhat cool moment in the game. But, uh, it's just too bad it's, like, the only one. Uh, eventually, you secure Hellman after some more nonsense, and you interrogate him about how he can help you not die in two weeks. Then Takamura finds you, and then interrogates Hellman next, or something. I don't really know what he does. Uh, anyway, after all that, Takamura needs help getting a hold of a woman named Hanako, who has some kind of important position in the Arasaka Corporation, I think. Uh, they're holding a parade in honor of uh, that president who died. Like at the beginning. And so we have to secure some kind of route for Takamura to get into one of the floats. I, th I think. So on the day of the parade, you have to shoot down three snipers. Uh, and, th and then you fight another boss who I don't think had any relevance to the story. And he'd only last 15 seconds if he didn't keep running away from you. Um, I guess they kind of realized that like combat in this game was just really bad. And you could just beat beat every enemy really fast and so they just have them run for you from you to pad out the length of the battle anyway takamura meets with hanako and then she gets scared and tries to run so he shoots her uh you call him out for being an absolute moron but then it turns out he only sedated her so she wouldn't call for help uh still pretty moronic it really just tried to just get a reaction out of the player like, that was her, I can only think that's the only reason why they even bothered writing it this way. So anyway, you testify to her that it turns out her brother was the guy who killed the Arasaka president. Because you saw it with your own eyes. Um, before anything else, some Arasaka minions invade the building you're in. And uh, Takumara is shortly sent to the dying corpse store where he, where he will rot with uh, Jackie for all eternity. While he was one of the better characters in the game, that Takumura, uh, he was still rather boring, so he will not be missed by me. And now it's time for the final act, which has been masterfully built up to. Eh, just kidding, the story's so underwhelming, it feels like there's very little stakes outside of uh, the whole dying thing. Uh, like, like, yeah, your character is about to die, either die or become possessed by Keanu Reeves, but I don't really care at this rate, bluntly. So I meet with Hanako, and she tells me to help her testify about the Arasaka pres president's murder. Uh, Keanu Reeves warned me that it was a bad idea. Now, he's unlikable for reasons such as swearing up a storm a lot, uh, being the instigator for the worst scene in the entire game, and talking about how impressive a certain part of his body is. But, 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 but he seems like the guy who kind of knows what to do in a serious situation. So, so I reject Hanako's offer. Or at least I think I do, because despite my dialogue options, Keanu Reeves whines about me about how I shouldn't have agreed to terms. Th then I get this relic malfunction pop-up, which is something that pops up a lot of the game in the, over the course of the story. Like, it's really annoying. Like, it, it just never does anything because all, all, like, all that happens is that your character just falls onto the ground and swears and breathes. Uh, all, although this time, uh, like, it does kind of mean something. And, th and then Keanu whines some more and then it cuts to black. 
Uh, you end up at the place where you find Victor, who, and, uh, pretty much it looks like Keanu Reeves really is about to take over your body. You're going to die again, and if it's not physically, then it's mentally, as you only see life through the eyes of a famous terrorist who made a name for himself 50 years ago. At best, you'll be a lifeless husk forced to endure the new life that the ghost inside your head has been given. At worst, you'll fall into the horrifying and endless void of death, this time for real. There may very well be nothing you can do about this, even if your final mission is successful. But, uh, V is a really boring character and is this player's self injured at best, so I don't really care what happens either way. So you invade the Arasaka headquarters by killing a bunch of people, even though I'm pretty sure Hanukkah is a representative of Arasaka and will probably be able to get you in? Uh, it, it, but, but anyways, then you meet the hologram of, I think, is supposed to be the Arasaka president. Um, then you go to this fancy meeting room and like this, like, place where it's like a terrarium or something. I don't, I don't know. Uh, and then, and then this is where you reveal the truth. But afterwards, some AI or something decides that everyone in the building needs to be killed. I, I, I have no idea why. It just comes completely out of nowhere. After getting through the upper levels, it is time for the final boss fight. Earlier in the story, Keanu Reeves ranted about, about some guy named Adam Smasher. He was the killer of either Keanu himself or this woman that he had a one night stand with that he really cares about for some reason. Uh, you can really tell just how invested in this story I was. Uh, anyway, Adam Smasher, yes that's really his name, uh, comes out of literally nowhere. There's no build-up whatsoever. I wasn't even expecting to find him. I just saw a boss meter appear on screen and thought, Oh yeah, it's that guy. I guess we do get to see him. This is probably the worst final boss battle in any video game I've ever played. As usual, all you do is spam the attack button with your katana. And the only reason he doesn't die in 20 seconds is because every so often he jumps away from you like a coward. And eventually, like, once you get him like, below half health, he starts doing this cheap move where he shoots a bunch of missiles and they stun lock you. It's basically an insta-kill move, Th though I did manage to survive each time he used a move. I mean, I didn't really care about the game, so I just played on the easy difficulty. It's whatever. Don't really matter at the end of the day. Anyway... Um, he also saw his minions for the fight, and this is kind of a problem, not because it makes the fight, like, artificially harder, but more so because this Adam Smasher guy doesn't have a unique design. Like, there were multiple instances where, like, I thought I found him and started attacking him, but then saw that the boss meter wasn't going down and realized, oh, that's not him, better go find another enemy to attack. So, after finally killing him, you find Hanako's brother... And, uh, stuff happens or something. Then it cuts to Black and you end up in a hospital in space for the only genuinely kind of interesting part of the game for the ending. So, I don't know how diverse the multiple endings for the game are, but basically just here's how it went for me. So, you part ways with Keanu Reeves and you wake up at the space hospital. The vibe of the place is really good and fitting. Uh, a, a doctor tests on you day after day for, like, basic cognitive functions and things like that, I think. Uh, eventually, you just go insane from all the testing because it's been like two weeks, and so you just refuse to do it anymore. The nurse leaves you alone in your room, and and then you can just cathartically take out your anger on all the testing equipment, just like throw everything around, like topple over stuff. Uh, it's probably a metaphor of how the player feels after getting to the end of the game. I mean, at least for me, because for all I know, this game's probably like widely considered a masterpiece in storytelling or something. But anyway, uh, then Hellman comes to your room and you get two choices. You can either sell your soul to the corporation, or you can leave and return to Earth. Uh, my friend suggested that I should sell my soul because he thought it would end the game faster. His logic sounded pretty good to me, so that's what I went with. Uh, for the first time in the whole game, you actually get to see the game from a third-person perspective, which personally I think this camera perspective would have suited this game better than a first-person perspective. Mainly just because... Uh, there's a character creator, like they make this really in-depth character creator, but then you can't even see your character for basically the whole game. So, uh, upon choosing this enemy, you just kind of walk into this room, and then you just, like, stare off into space, and then the credits roll. So that was the story. Pretty mediocre, in my opinion. Plot might have been interesting about, like, 15 or 20 years ago, but for today's standards, there was barely anything interesting or compelling about it whatsoever. Uh, before I go on, I do want to talk about a couple things that I do like about the game. Firstly, while it does, while this 
aspect does have some negative effects on the game. I do like the setting of this game. Uh, the futuristic aesthetic is very well done, and it really feels like a world with like a wide variety of like extremely advanced technology. Like it really feels like this is a world that has become like extremely advanced. Like whereas other games might just be, oh, it's set in the future, but it barely re barely looks any different from like most cities today look like. Uh, the graphics aren't impressive, like, on console, like, I haven't really seen PC footage, it might look good on there. But, but I do think, for the most part, the art direction is really good. Uh, I also like the brain dance segments of the game, and basically, brain dances are, like, recorded videos where you have complete control of the camera and can inspect anything that was recorded within the recorder's point of view. And, and like, this includes stuff like audio and even, like, the temperatures of people and objects. Uh, this is a really interesting style of gameplay that I've never really seen before. I, I, I just wish this was in a better game. Like, now maybe there's more in side quests, but I also feel like this was kind of underutilized. If I recall correctly, there are only four instances of this in the whole story, and one of these is just a tutorial that I think is irrelevant to the plot. Now there's one last thing I've been saving, and it is by far my biggest complaint with the game. I hate how vulgar this game is. I'm not asking for this game to be all saccharine and feel good and innocent. I'm really not. It is just irritating how glorified it all is. It feels like the writers had to make sure the game never went too long without a character saying the F word, for instance. There, there's some annoying slang here, which sounds to me like they wanted to use real-life slurs here, but decided against doing so. The dialogue in general is annoying, but these are the worst aspects of it. Then there's all the sexual overtones this game has. We get it. This game takes place in a dystopian future where I think is evil and advertisements get shoved down people's throat. But th but this is the whole sexual aspect of it is ridiculous. It is depressing to me that I can make a decently sized list of every pornographic advertisement I saw during my playthrough and I wouldn't even have the full list. There are a couple parts in the story we must go to a strip club of all places to meet someone so you can progress through the story. One of these times is introducing the concept of brain dances because there is no reason that I should not assume that developers wanted to shove as much uh, sexual references into the game as much as they possibly could. Uh, the other time you have to visit one is to get information for something or other and the game tries to make you feel bad for not getting seduced by some stripper that you don't even know. And of course it is now time to mention the worst scene in this entire game. During a flashback scene with Johnny. Some girl named Alt seduces him, and then they start making out and having intercourse. It is idiotic, it is shot terribly, and they go so far as to not have anything censored. If I'm being completely, brutally honest here, the developer should be absolutely ashamed of themselves for thinking that this was a completely necessary scene to have in this game. I was seriously considering completely dropping this game after that scene, and in hindsight, I'm surprised that I didn't. I didn't encounter that many bugs in my playthrough, but I suppose I should mention the bugs I encountered before I wrap things up here. The first thing I remember dealing with was a game crash, which happened about 6 hours into the game. Uh, fortunately, the game does autosave, so I didn't lose much progress. Uh, there was that car vanishing into thin air thing that I mentioned before. One time, I went to check the control settings to see how to holster my gun, and uh, once I was done, it would not let me exit the menu. I was forced to close the game and start it back up again. The worst one was in this weird blue digital area. Uh, normally you're supposed to talk with Keanu Reeves about something or other, but because his hologram gets all blurry and glitchy sometimes, I thought he like disappeared and like went somewhere else. So I thought I was supposed to explore this area to find him, which in reality you do literally nothing but talking, so there's no point in letting the player room for you here. There's not even an on-screen map. And this just led me to eventually falling out of bounds, reaching the death barrier, and then respawning just above the death barrier, meaning I was falling, dying, and respawning on an endless loop. If it weren't for the game auto-saving right at the section where you talk with Keanu Reeves and thus letting you reload that save, I, I probably would just delete this game right then and there. Uh, this last one isn't so much a bug as it is a really bad pop-in effect, but one time I approached this one random guy I had to talk to and his model wasn't fully rendered so it looked like a character model right out of Superman 64. So in conclusion, I do not like this game. I really do not like this game. It's barely competent at its best, and it's downright aggravating at its worst. Once I started to like it just a teensy bit, 
Uh, that's when they threw in the intercourse scene, and from there it just felt like the game was trying to make me hate it. Uh, if you like this game, that's good for you, really. It's just, I personally just do not get it. Even if the game was polished and looked good on consoles, I would still feel just about the same way about this game as I do with its present state. It's not the worst game ever played, but that's mainly because you've got to be actively trying to make a game worse than something like Marker Man Adventures. Uh, it's just a shame that I can't really reasonably expect to pawn off this game for anything more than $10.